Here are some coding mistakes that ruin your qualitative data analysis and how to avoid them. Mistake number one, insisting on too large a sample. If you are a PhD student, choosing the right sample size is critical for your study. Sometimes beginners think that a large sample size is better and try to interview too many participants. But here is the catch. Coding and analyzing large samples takes huge amounts of time and effort and can actually slow down your research without adding value. Instead, rely on well-established scholarly-backed strategies like data saturation. Data saturation is the point at which new interviews stop bringing new insights. For example, if 15 participants help you reach data saturation, do not interview 30, which is not necessary and it's not going to add anything meaningful to your study. Focus on quality over quantity. So the approach of using data saturation to keep your sample size small in qualitative research will make your analysis more manageable and will also ensure that you get the right findings. Let me interrupt this video for a minute and pose this question to you. Are you overwhelmed by qualitative data analysis? I've got you covered with two specialized services tailored just for you. But before I tell you of my services, let me start by informing you that I have an average five-star rating from previous clients that I've worked with both in the done for you and the consulting service. Now, here are the two services I provide to help you in analyzing your qualitative data. Number one, the done for you qualitative data analysis service. In this service, I handle the heavy lifting so you can focus on the bigger picture. My service includes meticulous manual coding where I code every word carefully for meaningful insights, theme development where I identify patterns that matter the most, data visualization where I produce stunning visuals that tell your data story, writing the findings report where I produce content that's ready to use for the fourth chapter of your thesis or dissertation which is the findings section and I also provide a walkthrough video recording which is a step-by-step -step explanation of how I analyzed your data using NVivo. The second service that I offer is the one-on-one -on -one NVivo consulting. In this service, we hop on a video call via Microsoft Teams or Zoom and in just a few hours, I'll help you become a pro with NVivo. So whether you are a beginner or looking to refine your qualitative data analysis skills, I'm here to guide you every step of the way. So don't wait, contact me today, my details in the description and in the pinned comment. Mistake number two, not taking adequate time to familiarize with the transcripts. One of the biggest mistakes that can derail your qualitative analysis is not spending enough time to get familiar with your interview transcripts. So after transcription, don't jump straight into coding. Take time to read through at least half of your transcripts carefully, like you are reading a novel or a story. Why? because this helps you, one, to understand the depth and nuances in participant responses, two, to start spotting patterns of shared meaning early on, and three, it will make your coding more accurate and insightful later on. For example, if you have eight transcripts, aim to read at least five thoroughly before coding. Also, make sure you take short notes of anything that stands out or captures your attention. So familiarizing with your transcript will ground your analysis in real understanding which will make your themes and codes much stronger. Mistake number three, not taking time to develop a standard way of naming the interview transcripts. Here is a rookie mistake that can cause big headaches, failing to standardize how you name your participants. If you just leave your files with names like recording five or use inconsistent labels, two things happen. You risk accidentally revealing someone's real identity, which will break confidentiality, or your participant IDs won't make sense later, so your analysis and storytelling will get confusing. Instead, work to develop a clear system before you start coding, renaming files to something consistent like participant1, participant2, and so on and so forth, or use pseudonyms such as Jane or Mark. Naming your transcripts effectively before you begin coding not only protects your participants but also makes your data easier to navigate and your report clearer. Now, here is a pro tip. Tools like NVivo, MaxQDA, and Atlas TI let you easily assign and manage the pseudonyms. Make sure you take advantage of that. Mistake number four, not taking time to classify documents in the right coding groups. 
Here is a tech related mistake that can seriously limit your qualitative analysis, not organizing your documents into the right coding groups or folders. If you are using tools like Envivo, Max QDA or Atlas TI and you skip this step, you are setting yourself up for a messy, shallow analysis. Let's say you are researching in the healthcare space and you have interviewed doctors, nurses and patients. If you don't group these participants properly, how will you compare their perspectives later on? You can't. So you lose the ability to track how themes differ across different groups of participants or roles within your participants that could have been the most insightful part of your research. What do you do? Before you start coding, classify your documents based on participant type, demographics, or other relevant variables. On the other hand, make sure you use folders, cases, sets, or attributes functions in your qualitative data analysis software. This small step makes a huge difference in making your findings richer, more structured, and more credible. Mistake number five, not keeping a reminder of what you are coding for in front of you. Here is another mistake that catches even experienced researchers off guard. Coding without a clear reminder of your research focus in front of you. When you forget what you are coding for, such as your research questions and your research objectives, you start tagging anything and everything and that means your coding turns into aimless note taking instead of focused analysis. So you end up with cluttered data, diluted themes and a whole lot of irrelevant codes. So here is a simple fix. Keep a sticky note, a digital prompt or a printed sentence in front of you that clearly states what you are coding for. So when coding, ask yourself, one, does this help answer my research question? Two, does this segment connect to my studies objective? Remember, Coding is not summarizing, it's about identifying and labeling what matters for your analysis. It's a process of elimination, not inclusion. Stay focused and your codes will stay meaningful. Mistake number six, not coding enough of the passages. Here is a subtle but damaging mistake, coding too little of your passages. Some researchers highlight just a single word or a vague phrase and assign a code to it. The problem? There is not enough context for anyone else or even your future self to understand why you coded it in that way. So a one word quote can't carry the weight of a full idea. It leaves your interpretation hanging without support. So what should you do? Include enough of the surrounding text to clearly show why that code applies. However, don't overdo it. There is no need to code an entire paragraph when a sentence or two sentences can do. Think of it like quoting in an essay. Enough to make your point, not so much that it gets lost. Mistake number seven, ignoring inconvenient results. Some researchers go into analysis with a fixed outcome in mind. And when the data doesn't align, they cherry pick, twist interpretations, or straight up ignore what participants actually said. This is not just bad practice. It undermines the very purpose of research, which is to learn, not to prove. So what should you do instead? One, stay objective and transparent. If your findings contradict your expectations, that's not failure, it's valuable insight. Two, make sure you highlight your original research questions or assumptions and then honestly explain how the data led you somewhere else. This kind of openness doesn't weaken your study, it makes it stronger, more credible and even more impactful. This is because in qualitative research, your job is not to be right, it's to be rigorous. Mistake number eight, inconsistent coding. Let's talk about another silent killer of good qualitative analysis, which is inconsistent coding. This happens when you apply different logic or criteria to similar data segments. One day you are coding a quote under work stress and the next day a nearly identical quote ends up under burnout with no clear explanation and no clear rules. The result, messy data, weak themes and shaky findings. To avoid this, Make sure you create clear written definitions for each code. Stick to these definitions. Regularly review your coding decisions to make sure they still align. And if you are working with others, don't skip intercoder checks to make sure everyone's on the same page. In short, be consistent or your findings won't be. Mistake number nine, overcoding or undercoding. Overcoding or undercoding are also common mistakes that can ruin your qualitative data analysis. Overcoding happens when you tag a single quote with every code under the sun. It turns your data into a cluttered mess and suddenly it's impossible to see what the main point is. Undercoding is the opposite. You barely tag anything. That rich insightful quote, you slap one generic code on it and move on. Nuance, gone. So how do you avoid this? 
try to aim for balance so that you don't chase quantity, chase clarity. Another way to avoid overcoding and undercoding is to use a layered or hierarchical code structure so that broad themes are at the top with more specific subcodes underneath. That way you are capturing both the depth and the bigger picture without drowning in chaos. Mistake number 10, letting bias take over. This mistake is sneaky but serious. Coding with bias or preconceptions. It's when you walk in the data already knowing what you want to find. So instead of listening to what the participants are actually saying, you start bending codes to fit your expectations or assumptions. That's not analysis. That's confirmation. And it ruins your credibility. Here is how to avoid it. One, practice reflexivity by regularly asking yourself, Am I interpreting this based on the data or my own lens? Number two, be honest about your background and biases. This can be done by writing a reflexivity section in your methodology or any other part of your dissertation, which is normally titled the researcher's role. In qualitative analysis, your perspective matters, but it shouldn't dominate. Another way to avoid bias is to triangulate. That means you compare your findings with existing research, theories, or even peer and participant feedback. So the goal is to let the data speak and not just your inner voice. Mistake number 11, hiding the process or lack of transparency. Let's be real. If someone looked at your analysis, could they actually follow your thinking? A major mistake that many researchers make is not being transparent in their coding process. This occurs when one assigns codes, builds themes, and reaches conclusion, but no one knows how they got there. It's like saying, trust me, without showing your work. That's a problem for credibility. And if you are writing a dissertation or publishing a scholarly article, it's a red flag for many reviewers. Here is how to stay transparent. 1. Keep a code book that defines each code clearly. 2. Use a coding journal or memos to capture decisions and changes along the way. 3. Always include direct quotes from your data to back up your themes and don't just summarize. In short, don't just do the analysis, show your reasoning. This is what makes your work more trustworthy. Mistake number 12. Being too rigid or lack of flexibility. Now, here is a coding mistake that can make your analysis feel robotic. Lack of flexibility. Coding isn't meant to be a rigid checklist you never revise. If you are forcing every data segment into a fixed set of codes from the start, you are missing the point of qualitative analysis discovery. So when you don't adjust as new insights emerge, you risk flattening your data or ignoring patterns you didn't expect. What should you do instead? Choose a coding approach that fits your research question and not someone else's template. Two, stay open as you code and expect your categories to shift, evolve, and deepen. And number three, don't be afraid to revisit and revise earlier coding. It's part of the process, not a failure. Remember, flexibility doesn't mean being messy. It means being responsive to your data and your goals. Remember, if you are feeling stuck with your data analysis chapter, don't stress. I'm here to help. I offer done-for-you qualitative data analysis services using NVivo. My done-for-you service includes coding, theme development, and visualization. On the other hand, if you prefer to learn and do the analysis yourself, I provide one-on-one -on -one consulting where I'll guide you step-by-step -step on how to master NVivo in performing qualitative data analysis. Reach out right now, check the description below for my email and link to my website.